but actually working across the aisle and actually uh, doing stuff that's best for Oregonians is a really big deal, and it's a, it's a neat thing. Part of Governor Tina Kotek's housing package passed the state Senate this week, and Representative Pam Marsh tells us she expects it to pass the House soon as well. The package includes plenty of changes in land use laws, allowing cities to expand their urban growth boundaries, which many expect will make it easier and cheaper to build housing. There's also a part where you'll be able to swap out uh, unbuildable land that's already in the UGB with land that's buildable outside the UGB, which is a really big deal because that means if you actually bring in 50 acres or 100 acres, you'll actually have that many acres with the buildable land. Tim Alvarez owns a construction company in Medford. He's also the president of the Oregon Home Builders Association, which worked with Governor Kotek on this housing package. He says taking away some regulations around land use will be helpful, but he also wants the state government to look at deregulating the permit process for building homes in the future. There's a need for permits, there's a need for building inspectors, but the average house in Oregon, it's north of 30 uh, percent is to regulatory cost. So if you build a million dollar house in $300,000, is a lot of money. Former Medford City Councilor Daniel Bunn also worked with Governor Kotek as part of her Housing Production Advisory Council. Kotek's plan aims to average 36,000 new housing units per year over the next 10 years. Bunn says his work on the council included finding ways to impact housing production immediately. The important thing to note is this is not a one and done thing. This is the short session. There's a much broader suite of things that need to be addressed. And I expect that the governor and her staff will be pushing for that in the long legislative session next year. Bunn says their plan addresses what they could realistically accomplish in a short session. He says having an infrastructure support fund to help builders with the costs of roads, sewers and other utilities will help housing production right away. But Bunn agrees with Alvarez that there are more issues with the regulatory process that need to be addressed in the future, among other problems. We have a shortage in our workforce, especially when it comes to skilled labor trades, electricians, plumbers, people who can hang drywall. There's just not enough of them. And so that's a longer term fix for our state.